I just want to um, just uh, acknowledge just a couple of people here this morning, particularly uh, the sister Anita. God bless you. Welcome this morning. Yeah. My brother, my Uso, and yeah. Pastor Russell, Pastor, Pastor Jamie. Just want to yeah. acknowledge you. Thank you for being present here today. Yeah. And a massive welcome to my niece as well, Trish. God bless you. Yeah. But just as importantly, welcome everyone here this morning. Yeah. God has given me a word wow. to speak into our lives. You know, there, there is something that's so exciting about church, right? Yeah. There is something that's about life for us. Yeah. And I want to encourage us this morning that our hearts will be open to what God is saying into your life yeah. and into my life. Oh, I'm not up here to look pretty, obviously not. <laughs> but I'm here that's waiting on God to hear what God would say. And let me say, every preacher that gets up here, even the worship leaders that get up here, we wait on God. Yeah, so good. Jordan, would that be a fair comment? We yeah. just don't. But we wait to hear what God yeah, is saying. So and if there's any time that we need to hear what God is saying, it's in this hour. Yeah, yeah. This is not about niceties. This is not about going with the crowd. This is about hearing what God is speaking into your life and into my life. Yeah. His word that makes a difference. His word that brings clarity. Yeah. His words that brings purpose into your life and into my life. That's what we hear about, right? And I'm so excited that people will take time out this morning to come and hear what God is speaking into your life and into my life. Because it's that that brings breakthrough. It's God's word that brings breakthrough. As Pastor Taylor has said, that the last six weeks we've been hearing about the God of breakthrough that Pastor Taylor shared so powerfully. The engine room of breakthrough. We've had Andre speak about God, knowing God, the God of breakthrough. There are many things we can hear the word of God, but unless we learn to apply it in our life, it's rendered useless. Yeah. 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 We know that we serve a God of breakthrough. But I'm asking you today, do you see that God of breakthrough in your life and in my life? We can hear about it, but when you look at scripture right from the book of Genesis all the way through the Revelations, there were many times when the word of God was declared, but breakthrough never came. Breakthrough never came. It didn't change who God is. It didn't change that God is still the God of breakthrough. The God of bow, bow is here. The God that's able to bring healing. The God that's able to bring clarity into your life and in my life. It doesn't change that. But whether our lives are changed and impacted, by what God speaks. Mm. By what God speaks. Yeah. And so we are in that breakthrough season. We are in that breakthrough season. And I've titled the message this morning, What do you believe? What do you believe? You choose. Mm. Let's just read our first passage of scripture this morning. And it comes from the book of Numbers. Chapter 13 and verse 25 and verse 30. And it reads, And they returned from spying up the land after 40, de 40 days. And now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the church of Israel, children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. And they brought back the word to them and all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, We went to the land where you sent us and truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Now the Bible gives a description of uh, one grape being carried by two Israelites. And this is its fruit. In verse 28 it says, Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there, and the Amalekites that dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites, they dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the river Jordan. Mm. And in verse 30 it says, And then Canaan quiet the people before Moses and said, Let us go there at once and take possession, for we are well able, we are well able to overcome it. Mm. Let's just commit God's word to his hands. Mm. Father, we thank you for this time. Father, we thank you that you are a God that's working in our midst. Yeah. We thank you, God, that you are a God that's working in the hearts of your people in City Chapel. Father God, that your word declares that we are blessed, that we would be a blessing, Father God, a blessing in our community, a blessing beyond this community, a blessing in our workplace, Father. 
We pray, God, that, that all our hearts be open to hear what you would speak afresh into our lives today. But just as importantly, God, that we will respond to the prompting, to the leading of your Holy Spirit. Yeah. To you be all the praise and glory, Father God. To you be all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask and pray these things. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Breakthrough season. And as I said, the title, you choose. You choose. You choose. Here we read the story. Here we read the story of the twelve spies. And most of us know that story, right? We know the story that the twelve spies go into the promised land. A land that overflowed with milk and honey. A land that overflowed with milk and honey. And when you look at scripture, many times in reference to the land that overflows with milk and honey, what it talks about, it talks about abundance. Right? Sometimes we think milk, uh, is this... Uh, like you know, fat-free milk is this like you know, is this almond milk? You know, all these different. You know, I mean, I don't know how Bruce is. No, I just want this. This can be the milk on the top, like, You know what I mean? But when you look in Scripture, milk and honey speaks about the abundance. Right? So let let us understand that. So when God says, "I'm taking you to the promised land," I'm taking you to a land that overflows, overflows, a land of milk and honey. He's talking about abundance, yeah. right? He's talking about fertility in the land. He's saying, hey, listen, there's, there's plenty. There's plenty for animals. There's plenty for this. There's plenty for that. But it also talks about spiritual abundance, right? right? It, it's, it talks about spiritual abundance. <clears throat> so it talks about there's a wealth of growth. Mm. There's a wealth of blessing, of peace. Yeah. There's a wealth of clarity in your life. There's a wealth that brings you stability in your in your thinking and who you are, right? It's not just about the cows that look fat and, and the lambs and, and, and all that. But it also speaks about spiritual growth. So when God says, I'm taking you to the promised land, Moses, get my people ready. Uh, and, and listen, be a little bit excited, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to a land of breakthrough, right? We're going to a land that's in abundance. I mean, who is here? This morning, they can do with a little bit more abundance of something. Oh, what? Well, everyone's got it together? Praise God. Hallelujah. I always just thought it was just Jordan, but obviously, I don't play to the whole church. Who can do with a little bit more of something? Yes. Come on, church. This is the God that you and I serve. We're talking about a God that wants to bless his people, that we would be a blessing in the community. That those who don't know the Lord will see something different right. about our lives, not only because we're smart or this or that, but because of God in your life and in your life. Isn't that what it's about? Isn't that what it's about? Isn't that what they will see God in your life? That's right. That's right. And so the, the, the ten of the twelve spies, they said, hey, listen, the, the Bible describes it as a negative report, a bad report. Right? But they got 75% of the report correct. Because they said, hey, you know what? We went to the land that you sent us, Moses, and it truly does overflow. The blessings are there. The breakthrough is there. The breakthrough is there. But, <laughs> they said, despite that, they, they, and when you see that word in Scripture, however, <laughs> you, know, you know, you get a bit nervous, right? <laughs> You know, you get a bit nervous. They said, however, we saw the descendants of Anna, right? Yep. And so what's Anna? They're related to Goliath. They're, la they're, they're a nation of giants. But spiritually, spiritually, they also, they're aggressive in their government. They are aggressive, not only aggressive, but they exercise absolute power of oppression. Right. Spiritual. Right. Come on. Yeah. I mean Goliath, right? Goliath. The name Goliath, what it means, okay, in Greek, it means to take a people from their land of inheritance and to displace them right. into a land of that's foreign, into a place of captivity. Did anyone feel anything when I said that? Sometimes we talk about giants, sometimes we refer to the life, but there's spiritual connotations. It's to take someone 
Who, who feels that times that we're sort of shifted from what belongs to us? Is it just the New Zealanders or I don't know. <laughs> who feels like you know something that's our inheritance and you're taken spiritually to a place that's foreign? Mm-hmm. And the Bible says, well, the Sardis could not play their harps. They could not play their music because they were in the land that was foreign. They were in the land of captivity. Right? So when, when these spies said, hey, we saw the descendants of Goliath. We know what Goliath means. You see, the Bible says no one argued. No one argued that, that, that there was giants in the land. So they had known about these giants. These are a nation that not only, as I said, they were descendants of Goliath, that would take you from what is in your inheritance and take you to a place that's foreign in captivity. Uh, to exercise absolute power and oppression and brutality. That's their government leadership. Talk about leadership styles, right? That was their leadership. And so when they spoke about, and the Amalekites, we saw the Amalekites as well. They were, they were down the south side of the land, right? Amalekite, the spirit they carry is one of deception. All right? They, they carry a spirit of deception. They not only carry a spirit of deception, but they carry a spirit of arrogance. Right? Not only arrogance, but they have anti-authority. No respect for anyone in authority. That was the spirit that they carried. The Hittites, they were a nation. Their DNA was one of warfare. Okay, they created, they invented iron. Iron, why is that important? If you look historically, that their weapons were far superior than to any other nation because the metal that was used by other nations in swords and fighting was ore and it could easily be smashed by iron. Wow. Not only that, the Hittites also invented the chariots of war. They just loved to war. They just loved to war. They carried a spirit of not peace but intimidation. Right, so when, when the 12 spies are speaking, 10 of them say, hey, these are the people that's in the land. They're not your nice next door neighbors. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they're, not your, yeah, yeah, they're, not your, they're not your nice neighbors. We think we've got bad neighbors at times, right? I mean, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, the Jesuits, okay, they were a nation that were relentless. They were a nation that were relentless. They were a nation that would come in and they would trample over you. They would trot over you. That was their, their historic, that's what they were known for. They, they would be relentless at you, at you, at you all the time. Okay? And what it says in the Bible, where it gets you to a point where they would put their foot on your neck. Yeah. It feels like sometimes like that, that's life. Some of the challenges that we have, some of the things that doesn't go our way, that we feel suffocating. That we feel that we can't breathe at times. Because the pressure is too much. Relentless pressure. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with it. I can't handle this. (laughs) The Amorites. And these are all nations in the land. The Amorites, they were known for backbiting, complaining, murmuring. And we see that spirit in the world today. Complaints, murmuring. Actually, we see it in the church. Come on. The Canaanites, they were demonic worshippers. And they would sacrifice their children to their gods. So, so I, I guess we look at the, the, the ten spies that gave this report. We saw these people in the land by the Jordan River, by the, the land to the south. We saw these people. They weren't going to be friendly neighbors. And the Bible says, we can't do this. We can't go into this land. I don't know what they expected. Like, you know, I mean, you know, I don't know what they expected, that God said, hey, I'm taking to a land that's in abundance. And they said, we can't do this. My question, 
Where in their thinking did they ever think they could judge God's word? Mm. Come on, church. Where in their thinking did they think that we can judge whether God can do this or not? Where in their thinking that they disrespected the word of God? And can I say these spies, when you look at them, the Bible says like they were like the priests of priests, they were like the bishops, they were young, strapping, strong, men that were elected to go into the promised land to spy it out. They weren't people that were like, like myself, or, you know, people that were sort of a bit slow getting around. These were young, strapping athletes. The Bible says, God spoke to Moses and says, select. So these weren't guys that were, you know, new to trusting in God, right? They had seen what God had did in Egypt, right? They had seen the, the place. They had seen the Red Sea open up. They had seen all those things. Now here they are judging whether God can do this or not. Where do we think that we can judge God? Where do we think we can judge God and say, yeah, you know what? Half of what God said is right. It is a land that overflows. But we can't do this. Where do we get that thinking that we're more superior to God's way? Because Canaan comes, right? Canaan, what does he say? What does Canaan say when he hears this? Thank you, Jordan. Someone read it up? We should go take possession of the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's said we should go up and take possession of the land we can serve the field. We can serve the land. Yeah. You are anointed to run. I think there's something you carry. Caleb, <laughs> Caleb. You know what Caleb means? You know what his name means? One who is faithful. Wow. Yeah. Right. This is Caleb's name. One who is faithful. Wow. One who puts his hand to the plow. One who is delicate. When you look up what Canaan means in the Bible, it means one who is faithful in the house of God. There is something when you, people carry something when they walk with faithfulness. Right? They carry their coat, right? There is something that's evident. There is something that is seen about someone who can Because you don't have to try and prove anything. It's just who you are, right? It's just who you are. Jesus Christ was faithful. To God the Father. He says, I come not to do my will, but to do the will of the Father. Everything I speak is what I hear my God say. Right? Everything I do is what I see my God do, right? Faith. There is something about someone who waits at the front door of the church and sweeps and just welcomes people. Faithful. Right? Canaan means faithful. That's crazy. I'm thinking, man, can you tell him? I mean, you know, you're going against other men who are in the same level as you. Men who are discerning. Men who are wise. You're going against them. And you said, no, hey, stop. The Bible says that he said to the people, be still. And sometimes we need to settle. Because sometimes our minds race in a million miles an hour. Man, I can see the promise of God, but I can see the giants. And now I am bigger than what God says I can do. God, you sit over here. Because wow. yeah. I'm making judgment on your word. Wow. Caleb comes and he says, Caleb, Caleb, he comes in. And I can see him. Caleb, faithful. Wow. Yeah. One who perseveres. One who turns up. One who rocks into the house of God. Right? Faithful. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Not when it's convenient. Not when things are going well. Someone who turns up all the time. Wow. Caleb. Faithful. And he comes and says, let us go up immediately. Let us go up immediately. Right? Because the Bible tells us in, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 1. And it says this. This is the prophet Isaiah. And he says, who has believed our report? And to whom the arm of the Lord has been revealed. Okay, so as I was asking, right, and there's a couple of things, very quick things in this. When Isaiah makes this profound statement, who has believed our report, right? Mm -hmm. That's on the back end, on the preceding chapter, 
52. He's telling the nation of Israel, he's saying, hey guys, guess what? God spoke to my heart and God's going to rekindle the dream in your life. God's going to rekindle the vision for your life. God's going to bring breakthrough season into your life. God's going to bring healing into your life. Right? This is what this guy is saying. And he says this, and who is it that believes this report? Right. Who believes the report of God? This is what he's asking. Why? Because there is a sense of unbelief. Right. There was a sense of, I mean, when I asked that, there was like four claps. I mean, <laughs> come on, come on. Let's try and get encouraged what God is doing in your life. You know, I know, I know it's tiring. It would be hard for the Usos, you know, my brothers and sisters because of what happened to the Warriors last time. Oh. We can still get encouraged. We can still get encouraged. You know, right? We can still get excited what God is doing. Yeah. So this is Isaiah. He's asking, who is it? Who is it that believes the report I've just told you in chapter 52? That God is about to do a breakthrough in your life. Yes. That God is about to restore broken relationships. Yeah. That God is about to answer the prayers that you and I as parents that would blame it before God interceding for our children. Yeah. For breakthrough. Isaiah, yeah. God speaks in faith. Go and tell the people. This is what's going to happen. That God says, I've heard their cries. Mm. I've heard their cries. And I'm going to bring change. Right. I'm going to bring change. As I speak that in the previous chapter, in the preceding chapter, then he senses something. Wow. It's like I've got four hand clips going. Mm. <laughs> and he said, who was it that believes the report of God? Oh, who was it? And that God, that God would show his arm of strength. What he's saying there, that God would be able to put, show himself strong on your behalf. Yeah. That's what his eyes saying. He said, listen, if you don't believe, you're not going to see it. What? If you don't receive, you're not going to see it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Maybe at times, that's the challenge for you and I. As I said, we can hear about the season of breakthrough. Yeah. And we still need to choose. Here's Caleb presenting the case, right? He says, hey, we can still go up. Yeah. Yeah. We can still go up. What report do you believe? Because he's Caleb said, because if God is pleased with us, we can do this. If God is pleased with us. The Bible tells us when that God, when when is I speaking here and he says, you know. Who would believe, who, who believes the word that I've declared? That God may show himself strong. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus, chapter 15 and verse 6, it says this, Oh God, your right hand is of power, is glorious. Mm. Your right hand of authority, it's power. Mm. And it says this, God, your right hand, it smashes to pieces. It smashes to pieces the enemy of unbelief. It smashes to pieces the enemy of negativity. It smashes to peace the hands of giants. This is what this is what this says in the book of Exodus. This is your right hand God. So when Isaiah says, who believes in the word of God, that God would reveal his arm of strength. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying to you and I. And whatever decisions or whatever situations that we might have right now, I want to say that let us trust in the word of God. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Let us trust. Let me just say this. Let me just read quickly here. In the book of Romans, chapter 7, in the book of Romans, chapter 4, in verse 22, and it says this, or verse 20. And they're speaking about Abraham. And it says, Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but that he believed the report of the Lord, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. This, what, this is why it was credited unto Abraham righteousness, right? Yes. Okay. okay, and I want us to see here, because one translation is it said that, that Abraham did not waver, but that he believed the report. Of the Lord, right? He believed what God says, and you're going to be the father of many nations, right? That word waver is so important in Scripture. Every word that's written 
in the Bible is important for our learning education. So the Bible says that Abraham, remember he's a hundred years of age, right? And he's past having children, his age. Sarah, his wife, he says her womb is dead. It's like, yeah. But God came to Abraham and says, you're going to be the father of many nations. Abraham hears this, and the Bible says in the preceding, chapter, in the preceding scriptures, that he did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not consider his age to be a factor. Yeah. He was aware of it, and he called it out. He says, yep, we're pretty old, but you know what? The Word of God is fresh in me. Oh. The Word of God is fresh. And he, re and he believed the report of God, and so he didn't waver. I want us to see something here, because sometimes that's what we're challenged in our lives, right? Because the word waver, it means to Go back and forth. It's like, yes, next minute, no, right? It's like, yes, I believe, yes, I don't believe, right? The, the, the biggest danger there that the Bible speaks about, where, you, where you're in that position, where you waver from, yes, I'm in, no, I'm not. <laughs> yes, I'm in to God, no, I'm not to God. Who knows what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know, sometimes things change, yeah. okay? What it does, it brings an instability to your position. It brings an instability to your posture, right? I mean, we know ourselves, right? You, you, if you're going to do something, then let it be stable. Let, let, I mean, because the Bible tells us in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 8, that, you know, a double-minded man is unstable in what? All of this way. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you're going to uh, and implement. It doesn't matter what creativity you might have. The Word of God is true and it says, listen, listen, if you're, if you're double-minded, double then you're going to be you're going to be unstable in everything that you do. But I think more importantly for us to understand, it also talks about mental health. It talks about emotionally in, uh, unstable. So when God puts in his word and he sees the response of Abraham, right? God writes it in his word that you know what? Abraham did not waver when I said against impossibilities, when I said against all hope, that Abraham in hope believed the word of God, right? It says I didn't waver, Lord. My position was steadfast. It never shifted. You know, even though the reports are saying this and that, I never shifted in my position trusting you. I never shifted. I never shifted. And you know what? It grabbed the attention of God. It grabbed the attention of God. How important is that? Because it says that, you know, a, a double-minded man is unstable. That instability, right? But you know how important it is? Who knows what it tells us in the book of Revelations? Chapter 3 and verse 15 and 16. Who knows what it says about instability there? Jesus refers to it as you're neither cold, you're neither hot, right? Either be one or the other. Don't be unstable. Don't say, yeah, I'm serving you more. Then I don't see you for the next week at church or for the next four weeks. Like, calm down, right? <laughs> like, you know, it's like, you know, I, I've got to have a mental health day, and so I've got to have the next month off from church. Or I've got to, I mean, God either is our healer or he's not our healer. Right? You know, God either is our breakthrough or he's not our breakthrough, right? And God's either he that refreshes us and strengthens us, right? And when we talk about mental health, I mean, I'm not an expert, but I've certainly been around it. You know, for many years in my profession, but certainly looking into the mirror. <laughs> and talk about mental health, right? And so, and what does Jesus say in Revelation? He says, listen, don't wake up. Don't be this. Next minute, this. Next minute, different. Next minute, not there. Because what does Jesus say? I'd rather you be one or the other, otherwise I'll spew out of my mouth, right? And sometimes we don't realize the gravity of instability, right? Sometimes we don't realize the gravity of whose report are we going to believe, right? This is what Caleb said. He said, listen, 
listen, who, who, who are you? Oh, I guess I don't know. I'm, I'm just faithful. Yeah, I'm just faithful. That's my name. Okay, I'm faithful. I'm just faithful. It also means to be brave. You, you're going to have courage to stand out. You're going to have courage to go against the, the, the tide. You're going to have courage to go upstream. You're going to have courage in this day and age. You're going to have courage in the house of the Lord to run. You see, church is not about niceties. It's about conviction. God's either God or He's not God, right? And God is wanting to connect and to build and to strengthen this own intimate relationship with you and I individually and collectively as a church. And God says what? In this hour where there's so much reports going on, right? You only have to look this way or that right, that way, and there's news reports and this, that, and there's so many reports competing for our attention. But there's only one report that matters. And that's the word of God. Yeah. There's only one report that matters yes. that we give time to. It's the word of God. Who thinks this is good in one? Yes. I'm just, I'm just asking if this is because you know this is for us, right? This is what God is saying to us. The change will come. Change will come. We're not hearing just about a season of breakthrough and we leave that word season of breakthrough on a placard on the wall. But that season of breakthrough is in here. In our heart. Season of breakthrough starts to bring change in our thinking. And, I, and, I, and I, have I got another five minutes? I just want to read this in the book of Mark. And I, I want to see a couple of key principles here. And it says in verse 27, And she heard the reports about Jesus. She hears the reports about Jesus. And came up behind them in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed. That she had received the healing that some of us here have yearned for. Healing of emotions, healing of things that have been torn and broken in our lives. Healing of fractured relationships. She heard about Jesus. Right? She heard the reports about that he was healed. I think one of the things I just want to really highlight in this is what reports that she had to disregard. Right? Because culturally, the setting at that time, because she had an issue of blood, a blood disorder, right? Whatever that may have been, depending on what scholar and what commentary you read, right? But nonetheless, suffice to say that she had a blood disorder. Yeah. And because of this blood disorder, right, she was classified as an outcast from society, right? So she was put into the hard basket, sort of, like, a too hard, you know? And she obviously, you know, and so she, she was on the outskirts of the city, and the city does, you know? And because she had this blood disorder, the church said, but well, obviously, she has not the favor of God on her mind. <coughs> so she's been cursed. So the church outcasted her as well. It's like, wow, go figure, right? And because she had this blood disorder, she had no contact by law with her family because of this illness. So she's, in essence, on her own. Just chucked out into the garbage dump. Because that's where she actually literally resided, was in the dump. One of the things is that the law at that time too, that when someone would come and to, to take a wrong turn and start walking down towards the local dump by mistake. And, and she was to see that person. <clears throat> this is what by law she was to cry out. I am unworthy. Do not come out this way. Right? Otherwise she could face penalties. So she would see someone and say, Hey, I'm, I'm not worthy. Don't come this way. I'm not worthy. She hears this, what she is by law told to and instruct what to declare, what to shout. But the Bible says here in verse 27, that she also heard the reports about Jesus. Which report shall you believe? Come on. She put her everything at risk to go in, in the midst of the crowd. She would have had to hide herself so they wouldn't recognize her. 
Wow. And we think we get it tough sometimes trying to stand in front. <laughs> right? It's not like you had, you know, the social welfare or whatever, government to give her a hand. She had to fight for her breakthrough. She had to fight. She had to believe God for her breakthrough. And the beautiful thing about it is not like she sat around. Faith without works is what? Death. What is God stirring your heart up for you change in your life today? What is God stirring your heart up for a breakthrough today? What is God causing you to rise up in your heart today? There was something, the Bible says that the woman heard the report of Jesus and she immediately went up. You know, Caleb said the same, oh, Caleb, that guy called Faithful, right? The Bible says when he heard that report, he says, hey, 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 he quiet the people down. Sometimes it's not the external voices. Sometimes it's the internal voices, yeah. right? It's what we are saying. Right? Because the Bible says the ten who gave the negative reports when they saw the descendants of Anak, when they saw the life, they said to themselves, they're speaking, they're having that, that self-discussion there, they're having that narrative to themselves. They said to themselves, we are but like grasshoppers in their sight. Yeah. What are we saying to ourselves? What are we saying? What did this woman who wanted breakthrough? What did this woman who wanted change? What did this woman that she wanted life? That she says, I can sit here because what everyone tells me what I am supposed to be. Worthless. Not worthy. I can sit here and see Jesus go past and miss the moment of breakthrough in my life. See, the Bible says, do not miss the moving of the Spirit of God. Yeah. And sometimes we think, oh, God's gracious God. Yes, He's all that. But there's a moment in time where God's quickening His church to rise up. And what's that moment in your life you're doing it today? What's that moment of difference? I'm not here to give a nice word or a nice... That's not me, those who know me, right? It's about life. Because you know what? One of the biggest things that we don't realize sometimes, tomorrow is not guaranteed, church. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Tomorrow, so we, we may not be able to sit in there. That rubbish dump tomorrow. She, that woman, that woman with the issue of blood, that disorder, she could still be in the rubbish dump. But the Bible says no. She said to herself, if I could but just touch Christ, the hem of his garment, healing would come. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, verse 1, and I finish off. Um, Another five scriptures. <laughs> the Bible says, "Good look, everyone's awake, everyone's responding." Praise God. <laughs> the Bible tells us the Book of Psalms, like verse one. It says, "Blessed are those who do not follow the report of ungodly men." Come on, blessed are they who do not follow or hear the report of the ungodly men. It says, or the advice of their God, but they delight in the law of the Lord. They delight in the report of God. Because the Bible says this, that everything they touch, when they trust in the report of God, everything they touch, what, turns to God. Everything they touch, the Bible says, you shall prosper. You shall prosper. You shall have that promised land. You shall have that abundance of healing. You shall have that abundance of, of healing between broken relationships, between you and your children, between family members. You shall have that healing. That's the promise of God for you and I. It doesn't matter. God's promise is not subject to our history. God's, God's promise is not subject to, oh, well, you've had a tough. No, God says, what do you want to do? about it today. What is what what report do you choose today? You see the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that Satan still comes today and he says what? Well, has God really said this? When he asks him, has God really said this that you can't have any fruit of the in the garden? That voice still comes today. Has God really said this? God hasn't said that. 
God hasn't said that. He still comes to deceive. I finished on this scripture. I was only joking about the other five scriptures. <laughs> oh, look at the relief of the church. That's so fast. <laughs> but anyway, I understand lunch is waiting. But I pray difference comes, breakthrough comes, right? And the Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 3, and verse 4, and it says this If men give you a report, right, which is contrary to the word of God, let God be true and every man a liar. Yeah. Let me say that again, Romans 3, 4. If, if men give you a report which is contrary to the word of life, the word of breath, the word of healing, then let God be true and every other word of negativity be called out as untrue. I'll finish on that. I, I just want to I just want to us just to reflect on the word today. Which report will you believe? Caleb, faithful. Caleb, courageous. Caleb, bold. Caleb, brave. You know what? When, 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 I, when I read that and, and I asked the Lord, wow. You know, and, and I'm not just saying this, right? God says there are many Canaan's in this house. I said, I don't need to sing about Come on, church. The Bible says there are many covenants in this house. There are many covenants in this house. Those who are faithful, those who are brave, those who would stand up and say, we can do this. We can do this breakthrough. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? If there's something in your heart that God's prompted right now, and, and whatever it may be, whatever it may be, maybe God put a, a vision in your heart, a word, maybe God's stirring you up right now. If that's you, if this word relates to, to your heart right now, I'd just like to see you raise your hands. I want to pray for that, Rachel. I want to pray, God help us to believe your report. Help us to believe your report. For too long I've had that report of negativity. For too long I've had that report of self-doubt. For too long I've had that report of uncertainty. For too long I've wavered between God, can you or maybe you can't. For too long. God help me. Help me. I think Clyde just said this morning that he can see there's many Canaan's in the house. Help me be that Canaan, right? Help me be that Canaan. If that's you this morning, then I want you as a part of your response to what God is doing. Just come quickly to the front. Just come quickly to the front and let me pray for you. If that's you that this morning, God, maybe there are many times I've believed on negative reports. And maybe I haven't learned to listen to your report. Maybe for whatever reason, I've been broken and I've been hurt. And I haven't taken your report to heart. And God, help me be like Canaan, Father God. That every word that exalts itself, it's contrary to your word. God, let me call it out as untrue. Let me call it out as false, God. Then I may see your hand yeah. of healing. Then I may see your hand of breakthrough. For those who are still seated, if you would like to lean your hands towards the front, let's pray. 